Thank you, Marita, for the generous introduction and welcome to the Philippines. And uh, my staff has prepared 89 slides, so I must do seven seconds per slide. <laughs> Let's get started. It's really, the title of my talk is Addressing the Hazards Before It Becomes a Disaster. It's 90% cheaper to address the hazards rather than rehabilitation. And uh, architecture is my profession, urban planning, but uh, we had the opportunity to help. Right now, we're helping Kathmandu. We're designing a cancer hospital, a university and three schools, designed for 1,000 years, for an earthquake that never happened. I know every 100 years, there's a big earthquake there. And before that, in, there was a big earthquake in Bamiran. Again, we designed the school buildings, uh, 11 of them, I think, has been built uh, for an earthquake that never happened, intensity 10. Even if they're building really codes only intensity 8. And, um, in, in our country, we are in the Pacific Ring of Fire, uh, the Asia Pacific. But the, the good thing about our country is if you rotate the map of the world, we're right in the middle. And uh, that's also positive. You know, so these are the countries we've done work, 39 countries. Next slide. And we have so many things good for our country. We're number one in the world in marine biodiversity. We're number one in voice call centers, number one in sailors. I'd like to believe we are number one in musicians, number two in geothermal energy, number two in BPOs. We have the third longest coastline in the world. And number four in gold reserves, number four in shipbuilding, number five in all other mineral resources, and number 12 in human resources. The Philippines is 400 times the size of Singapore, 350 times the size of Hong Kong, eight times the size of Taiwan, three times the size of South Korea. And from the 1930s to the 1970s, we're number two in Asia. So the rest of Asia, they voted. Metro Manila is financially the best financial center. Um, we're only second to Japan. So these are the countries at least. Uh, the Philippines is number three uh, all over the world in, in, in vulnerability to disasters. Climate change is now really reality. Next slide. And recent disasters in the Philippines, like Typhoons on Doi and Habagat. It was 2009. And this is a disaster, the one in Bohol, and Cebu earthquake. And Super Typhoon Yolanda, 300 plus kilometers per hour. The strongest uh, in the world. Next slide. And this was a picture of after, after the Haiyan or Yolanda of Tacloban. Disaster preparedness, are we really prepared? There are 18 kinds of hazards. 10 man-made and 8 uh, natural disasters. Next slide. And Metro Plan Manila 757, we, we already knew that time where uh, I was team leader at the World Bank Fund at Metro Plan Manila. And we knew already at that time which areas in Metro Manila would be affected by disasters, flooding and earthquakes. Next slide. And this was a flooding 1977. And um, the flooding, more recently, is still practically the same footprint of floods. Next slide. So th this was a study by JICA of Japan that if we are hit by a 7.2 earthquake, about 50,000 people will get killed. 33,000 from the earthquake and 20,000 from the fire. That will happen after the earthquake. Next slide. And learning from the best practices around the world. Next slide. That was Dubai when we first planned it. I was a planner of Dubai 77 and how it was fast-tracked to join the first world. Next slide. Uh, Hiroshima, Japan, the worst uh, devastated city after the war, and Hiroshima today, how they could recover, rebuild, better than what it was. Warsaw, Poland, the second worst devastated city in the world, and this is Warsaw, Poland today. So they were able to pick up, build back better, safer, more sustainable. Earthquake adaptation, the 101 building in, in Taipei, they had this pendulum to balance, balance the building in case of big earthquake. Next slide. And adaptation mitigation around the world, like in Singapore, they collect rainwater and so on. And smart tunnel, also, in, this is in, in Kuala Lumpur, how to address flooding. Uh, Venice, even if it's flooded, they still have a lot of tourists. Because they have elevated walkways interconnecting the tourist spots. Next slide. And Singapore, drainage system, it's 100% recycled, the, the water. Next slide. And interconnecting the buildings. 
this was first done in the Petronas Tower. It's not just an architectural statement, but when one building, for instance, on fire, you could walk across to the other buildings. Next slide. And New Orleans, uh, flood proofing your room, your, your house. Elevate the house on stilts, just like our ancestral homes here, above the flood lines. Next slide. This one we did, after the big floods here, in Metro Manila and the rest of the country, we at Palo Fox, we designed houses that would float or on stilts higher than the flood lines. And uh, also turning your roof into, into gardens and rainwater harvesting. And uh, it's still rainwater harvesting. And the first 20,000 20, hours after the disaster. So first, an immediate action, policy inclusion, updating comprehensive land use and zoning, and public and private partnerships. 24-7 hospitals, evacuation centers, school facilities, public facilities, livelihood employment agri-based projects. Next slide. Some initial recomm recommendations. When Typhoon High and Yolanda happened, bunk houses were built. And I called the attention of the government that uh, they were not gender sensitive, they're not big enough, and so on. So there's a standard three and a half square meter per person in a transition home. Next slide. Next, yeah, every, every town or community, they must have a, a evacuation center, emergency clinic, with water station, food station, emergency shelters, emergency telecommunication command centers, emergency fire trucks, and emergency helipad, and maybe some places of worship, interfaith. And the new normal we have to address now. Because what you saw happening in this country was, uh, and maybe because of climate change, the hundred year floods is now happening almost at every other year. That's now the new normal. And some disaster related rehab projects that we work on. So we start with the hazard mapping before you do the land use and zoning. Next slide. And adaptive architecture. Build the buildings above the highest flood line. And next slide. Next. You can see the ground floors, there's nothing there, so that let, just, let it just be flooded. Next slide. These are schools also for rehab areas. Next slide. Uh, this was the, these were the schools we designed for BAM Iran after the big earthquake. We designed the school buildings to, for intensity 10 for an earthquake that never happened. Next slide. And in Aceh, Indonesia, new townships. Uh, these are current work we're doing now in, in Kathmandu, Patan Campus in Nepal. Next slide. Uh, Kanyamandir Campus in Nepal, in Kathmandu, and so on. Next slide. This is a hospital. These are designed for 1,000 years. First time somebody asked us to design buildings for 1,000 a a thousand years. But they have to retrofit the concrete every 100 years, uh, every 70 years. Because concrete in Nepal is good only for 70 years. Next slide. And proposing to interconnect the uh, whole Philippines with nautical highway or bridges and tunnels. Next slide. This one, 2006, the Global Peace Forum in New York. I, uh, Father Reverend Moon recommended to connect the, the Cold War countries like Russia and Alaska. Then after that, I was inspired to do interconnect the whole Philippines, uh, the, whole con the whole world, the six continents of the world. At first, the reaction was, what's this crazy Filipino talking about? It was in New York. Then the next day, people were congratulating me. Because it's cheaper than the Gulf War. So peace and development projects are cheaper than, than uh, conflict and wars. Next slide. And postcards in the future. We take pictures of the uglification of our cities and send architectural perspectives to our mayors. So this uh, polluted water here. Postcard from the future. This one in uh, uh, informal settlers community. Postcard from the future. Uh, this one, another uh, stero. Postcard from the future. And Ermita New Creek, someone. Postcard from the future. Next. Postcard from the future. In Ilo Ilo, future. Sambuanga, in the future. Pasig River today. Pasig River of the Future. 
I wrote this in my term paper at UP in 1973. Development is not worthy of the name unless spread evenly like butter and a piece of bread. I think we all like to live in master plan environment friendly cities and communities that are better connected, more accessible, more walkable, bikeable, safer, better lighted, more convenient, cleaner, with mixed income, cross generational, with mixed developments, integrating places to live, workshop, and dine, learn and worship, with self care, recreation, and leisure, with some 24 hour cycle activity centers. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.